I am positively certain now at this, uh, this moment that Irish music is tremendously safe. It will never die. I mean, he was a player, he was a maker, he was a teacher. Uh, he did everything and, and you know, obviously he's a terrific character and a virtuoso player as well. So I think that just came across. People just got that about him, you know. Uh, he was someone who played the whole instrument and people always remarked on the tuning of his pipes as well and how, how, how well they were tuned. He, he, was, he was it essentially. And I think a measure of his importance was that when Clava Records was founded, uh, the very first musician they went to to record was Leo Rosen. He was uh, catalogue number CCO1. Leo, um, he, he got some of his pupils together and uh, decided to try and form a, a, a club. Leo was at the forefront of people calling for a, a, an organisation set up specifically for Ilham Pipers. He was very vocal in that regard and he was uh, instrumental in uh, getting the first meeting going in uh, 1968 in Bettingstown. At, at the time the, the, the people was formed in 1968, there was probably about 50 people at the original meeting. and. Uh, Later on, the committee extended the list of pipers in the world to about 200 odd players all over the world. So it was quite, very, very few really. And Leo was the only full-time maker. Um, now we estimate there's about 5,000 players around the world and about 50 full-time makers. So it really has exploded and it's truly international. The sound of Ireland is certainly, I think you, you could argue, is, is the Ilham Pipes because that is that sound that people really associate uh, with, with the country. And uh, I think, Part of the uh, essence of that sound is in the sound that Leo got from his own chanter and, and the chanters that he made. Uh, it, it's, it's a unique and haunting sound. It's hard to estimate the amount of influence he had with Ilham Python and uh, even traditional music because he, um, in an age where traditional music and uh, Ilham Python was nearly, uh, had nearly died out, he was, he used to um, perform concerts and he wasn't, he was very proud of his art. I've been listening all my life to my father and it means an awful lot and I, he's extremely talented. You know, I, I was always mesmerised any time he would play and sit and look at him and he'd be just stunned at how technically technical and what an expert he was. It can't be uh, overestimated, he really was a link person uh, between the older pipers and pipe makers and, and the people of today and there are still makers out there today struggling to try and capture the kind of sound that Leo was able to produce from, from his instruments and uh, using them as, as uh, his instruments as models for what they do today. Sadly, he passed away very suddenly, so we, we were all in shock for a long time after it. But just after he died, you know, things just seemed to um, improve. It's like coming out of a recession. And uh, then his piping began to trickle back. It's very, very encouraging when you see the young players, uh, including people like Mark Hogleisett, who's a great grandson of, of Leo, an absolutely amazing player, and Tierna Rosen and uh, Luke McGranahan, all those uh, descendants of Leo and the Rosen family are amazing players. His legacy will live on forever, I think. <laughs>